Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgression. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. soon by your hands. When with rebuke you correct me for iniquity, and then you make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is made. Say Lord. Hear my prayers, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner, as all my fathers were. Remove your gaze from me, that I may regain strength before I go away. And am no more. Let not your heart be troubled. We believe in God. Believe also in me. In 
my father's house how many mansions if it were nicer I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand. Up. Amen. Amen. God the praise. Can we give him one more praise in the house this morning after glory? Can we give God praise for a true born soldier who has gone on over to the other side? But this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in him. Even at a time like this, we ought to rejoice because we know that God has won the battle. Can we give God some praise? I have to go 
said, send me, I now go. If I have to go by myself. I don't need anybody with me because I'm going over to be with Jesus one of these old mornings. And it won't be there alone. Amen. At this time, we'll have our Old Testament by Elder Sarah Faison, followed by our New Testament by Elder David Beard, and then our prayer comfort coming from Pastor Louis Pink. Get off this phone. You know what I mean? Mr. 
Henry Cooper, let me back in. <laughs> Our scripture today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'll be reading from the King James from verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant right. concerning them which yeah. are asleep. Oh, yeah. That ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Yeah. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, yeah. even so then also those which sleep in Jesus yeah. will God bring with him. Yeah. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. that we which are alive yeah. and remain yeah. unto the coming of the Lord yeah. shall not prevent them which are asleep. Yeah. For the Lord himself yeah. has said yeah. from heaven with a shout, yeah. with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, yeah. and the dead in Christ yeah. shall rise first. Them which are alive and remain yes, shall be caught up together yes. with them in the cloud yes, to meet the Lord in the air. Yes. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, well, comfort one another with these words. Yes, to God be the glory. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything that God in Christ. Most gracious and all wise God, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, Lord, it's once again we must submit to your humble will. Lord, we come right now, first of all, to say thank you. Lord, we want to thank you for being a good God, even at a time like this. Lord, we thank you for this celebration as we celebrate the life and the legacy of one of your servants. But, Lord, you realize, oh, Lord, that you've done what we all must do. And, Lord, I want to tell you thank you right now for all the contributions that Deacon Peterson gave to this uh, society and this world. God, I thank you for how he represented you, oh God. How he was a friend to everyone. And he showed us how to love right there, Lord. And, and married to his wife for so many years. And we thank you for his family, God. And Lord, we just want to say thank you how he used the gifts and the that you blessed him with, Lord, and singing and teaching. But most of all, that God, we just want to say thank you for a great example. Lord, you are God and above you. There is no other. And we realize even on this day, Lord, that hearts are heavy and eyes are red with crying tears. But Lord, your word told us that we breathe not of those who have no hope. But Lord, we know that there is a land and a better place where we shall all dwell in. And I want to tell you thank you, Lord, for some 20 years ago, you allowed me to preach a sermon down here. And I asked the question, have you been to the library? And then from, from that time to the last time, when I saw Deacon Pearson, he said, library man, have you been in that library? He said, I have some stuff in that library. He said, that the way you will see it is there, but the gift of God is in that library. He said, love eat one another is in that library. He said, that in my father's house, I've been in matches. And if it was not so, it's in that library. He said, why, every man, have you been in there? He said, we got to stay in that word. I said, love thy neighbor as thyself. And I know that the computers have stayed in that library because you can't go in that library and it's not showing your lifestyle. And then, Lord, he realized that also in that library were the words that in my father's house are men and mansions. But before I get there, Lord, he said, Jesus made us a promise. That he will go before us, and if he went, he'll come again. And now, Lord, we'll celebrate that day when you sent your angels to get Deacon Bud Peterson. And now, God, we realize, Lord, that he won't come back to us. But I pray, Lord, that somebody will be aware, even on today, as you bless the man with the word, dear God, that somebody will make a decision, what must I do to be saved? God, I pray for an anointing this morning. 
this evening, God. Lord, let this not just be a regular free road, God. But let somebody cry, I yield, and I yield. Let somebody cry out there, Lord, please, Lord, take my hand. As a matter of fact, somebody needs you right now, God. Somebody saying, precious Lord, take my hand and lead me on and let me stand. And then, Lord, we realize the traveling days are gone. And we'll no longer have this opportunity. We're grateful for a prepared place for prepared people. Yeah. And in the library it says, Job said, the wicked are six from trouble. Yeah, yeah. And the river soul yeah. shall be at rest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for this life. Yeah. Thank you for this legacy that we celebrate. Yeah. But most of all, God, we thank you for being God. Yeah. And Lord, this is your servant's prayer. Yeah. In all that name that matters. In the majestic name of the one who is, was, and forevermore shall be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 We certainly do thank God for the scriptures and prayer. At this time, we will have a selection of mail course.
His gentle spirit and care for others deeply impacted so many lives. He is indeed a hero, and his gift for uplifting people, mentoring people, and sharing his angelic singing voice with us was an extra bonus and blessing. Each time I visited him and Aunt Irene from Germany, he would greet me with a warm handshake, and he would proudly utter the German phrase, was first lost, which means, what's going on? <laughs> He served in the army in Germany, and I vividly recall when he spoke about how his service in Germany was so unique. He talked of how the German people were so kind and grateful to him, especially since black American soldiers were still quite segregated during that time. Amen. But they still marched through the villages and fought to help liberate Germany. Thank you sincerely for your service, our fellow veteran and hero. I also recall how Uncle Allie and Aunt Irene's house was the place where the McPhail and Peterson families would often gather for reunions, special occasions, and some awesome meals during the 70s and early 80s. Yeah. Uncle Allie would begin every occasion with a soulful prayer, then he would sing us a beautiful hymn and remind us to keep a strong family bond and to always take our burdens to the Lord. Take your rest in God's kingdom now. Your work is done on this side. You've served as a soldier for the Lord and a soldier for this nation with pride. You left such a positive impact on many and with memories we can't forget. Farewell and smooth sailing with the angels. There's nothing you need to regret. Keep on singing and rejoicing in heaven and sharing your spirit from above. We'll ensure Aunt Irene and the family are safe and continue to spread your love. Lots of love, Aunt Irene, Iris, Myra, Mark, and family. Nephew and cousin, Jerry Deaver and family. Mains, Germany, July 4th, 2024. These are a few of the expressions of sympathy the family would like to share today. I'm going to miss his smile and his presence. Cousin Bud and his beautiful wife lit the whole room whenever they came around. His heavenly singing always brought tears to my eyes, Eric Beard. I send my condolences to your family. I have thought about you a lot over the years. You taught me a lot about the plumbing business when I worked with you as a young man. You would always have a smile even if you didn't feel good. Amen. Singing your gospel songs while working is something I will always remember. Rest easy, my longtime friend, Frank Hobbs. I would like to offer my sincere condolences to the Peterson family during this loss. My prayers are with you. Former Clinton High School football coach Bob Lewis. It pains me that we cannot be present with the family today. Your dad has been a part of my spiritual upbringing and has always encouraged me in my walk with Jesus. You are in my thoughts and prayers. Current Clinton High School football coach Johnny Boyden. Your father was a father to many of us in Sampson County and at St. Paul Church of Christ, Disciples of Christ. I remember those days when he would take some of us from the choir to go and sing at different places. I would ne never forget his words of wisdom. He was a great Christian man and will truly be missed. I pray you and your family will find peace and comfort. Vanessa Snellings, former member of St. Paul Junior Choir. At this time, could all of the former members of the St. Paul Junior Choir and Sunday School Choir under the direction of Mr. Bud please stand? <laughs> the family of Deacon Allie J. Peterson again would like to express their sincere gratitude to everyone for their kind expressions of sympathy. Your phone calls, messages, visits, flowers, thoughts, and prayers have all helped us greatly during this time of our bereavement. It is our prayer that God will continue to bless each of you. Amen. We're not going to do a lot of talking because just what the 
sentiment from out there where that would be on the bud. That's what he would say. Go ahead and sing, son. So, <laughs> big old blinds. How many know that God is still in charge? Many times in our when we've done all we can to do what
bad pastor. Amen. Amen. It gives me a great honor and pleasure to come before you today to say a few words about our Deacon Peterson, our friend, and our cousin. And just a great man. Church, I've known Deacon all my life. And it seems like he's been singing and working and on the battlefield for the Lord ever since I know him. You know, he was just a great man first, a great leader. He was a chairman here at the church for a long time. Up until he was unable to hold that job. But I, I always remember that we all still looked up to him as the chairman right up to the last Amen. day of this church. We know Deacon Adam Peterson, Hannah Peterson is the chairman now, but Deacon Adam was just something special, y'all. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know words to say. As a Louis Borkin, Dr. Louis said, he was a man that lived that life. He didn't just talk it. He didn't just sing it. He lived it. And we all know it that he did. Now, I remember so good that he'd always stand up in board me and he said, fellas, <laughs> so we got our attention. He said, remember this. If you don't remember nothing else, that Mark can tell him the same thing. Only that that you do for Christ is going to last. And then he said, do not be weary and well done. Dick, Dick can walk strong, y'all. He can walk strong. Oh, just give me an honor, y'all. Just a bit in there. May of course with a singing man like Deacon Adam Peterson. I came in this church about 40 some years ago and uh, they put me right to work. I'd sit right there where I'm sitting, where Deacon Brunson's sitting, Deacon Adam Peterson would sit right beside me and then Trustee Luther Edwards would sit right beside him. Mm -hmm. Then Mr. Bill Smith would sit right beside him for years and years and years in and years out. Days and nights, we go off the same Sunday afternoons. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This is a little, this is a little character. Here. We are, uh, we will be sitting right there, and uh, Deacon Peterson always had to get that peppermint out of the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> he reached in there, get that peppermint out there, and then you know Miss T V over there looking at it. He had his too come out, of the and they'd be over there just rapping. <laughs> Get back to them. It's amazing, y'all. It's, it's just so fun. You know, they were jewels to me. Now, they threw out that time. Right. But they would look at each other and just smile. They look at them and something like that. And it, it just, y'all, we, 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 I didn't realize I was sitting in a, in a choir with such jewels as I just said that, that we had. But Dick and Peterson, he was just, oh, I got to move along. I know. I, I, I got to Oh. Uh, you know what? He thought, Deacon Peterson, I was president of 30 years. Uh, he would always say, I got this in my Can't even walk without your own mind. <laughs> then he'd say, When to get? Swing up and walk. Talk to him. Then he'd say, Glad to be here. I'm so glad to be here. Then he'd, then he'd break out a little time and now to get in a hurry and do it now. And he'd also tell them to be what you are. Huh? Be what you are. Then he'd say, somebody touch me. Then he'd say, God told no. Just to be an art, huh? Anybody remember that? Then he'd say, someday, God going to separate. Right? And you know what? He, he, now he loved to hear this. He said, it's all in the word. Anybody remember that? It's all in the word. In the word, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you go, your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. 
That's what he was. He said something. And then he said, God is still in charge. Yes. I don't want to just say, well, we're doing a good job. God is still in charge. And then he would say, Christian, we'll live in, in a land and new day. And I know that our way is going to seem hard. Get on the railroad track. 
they had church here, what we call every fourth Sunday. And then finally, Reverend Henry Beeman, he initiated the plan to have service for the young people every first Sunday. Yes. And I remember that well because we had this young lady, and I believe I see her in the back right now, Dr. Dorothy Best. She used to, she used to sing that song about, I'll live again. I know y'all don't remember. But anyway, she was the singer in those days, and uh, Deacon Peterson was right there too. So the family, okay, they walked to church, okay, and they were here. They weren't just here, but they set a good example. Now, how many of you ever saw Deacon Allen? Of course, we knew him as Boo. How many of you ever saw him roller skate? Anybody? Okay, that was before he had the motorcycle or a car. He used to come from Mobile out here. I mean, he was good. And, and it goes to show you that you can influence people. He didn't know that he influenced me, but I was looking. I said, boy, I'd sure like to do that. But I didn't want to fall. <laughs> so you can't learn to roll the skate without falling. So uh, what I did, I got me two tobacco sticks. Anybody know what a tobacco stick is? Yeah. Yeah, you all don't know. But anyway, I got one in the left, one in the right, and that's how I would be doing it. I would be doing okay. But I couldn't do it like him. He just shoo. <laughs> Go right. But anyway, what happened, I said, I'm going to get rid of these sticks and then I'm just going to be like Deacon Peterson, you know. And I got rid of one of the sticks, but the other one, I think I got rid of the skates first. <laughs> I got to tell you, this family, they were very, very kind. Because I remember when their relatives passed away and they took the kids into their house. I remember that as a kid. And I saw one of them, I saw one of them up here and he's a pastor. So it goes to show you, God brings us to them. And he brings us through him. But we don't know exactly because I believe that Deacon Alley used to listen to the song by Huey and the Jackson Southern Ear that would say, You won't need no wheelchair there. He said, Because your legs will be new and your feet. We'll he said, and I'll just walk around and this is what I know for a fact. Okay? I know that they were kind. They were kind people. And some of you, uh, I know you weren't there. But back in 1865, when Lincoln was shot. Y'all remember that? I know you saw this. When he was shot, they rushed him out of the Ford Theater. Guess whose house they took him to? Took him to the Peterson's house. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, I gotta tell you, that's what you can know about being kind. This is what the Bible tells us to do, to esteem others higher than ourselves. <laughs> Not to look on our own stuff, but look on the things of others. Okay? And I know for a fact that Deacon Peterson, I know we're going to miss him. Mother? Yes. We're going to miss him. But you know what? We stand on the promises. We'll see him again. Okay? We're going to see him again. And this is how we know for a fact. Okay? Because I know he read that scripture. 
that scripture in 2 Timothy 4 and 7 when it says, I have bought a good life. Amen. I have finished the race. Oh, yes. I have kept the faith. And then he said, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Where's the Lord, the righteous judge, who give me at that time. Okay? And not to me only. He could have been selfish and he could have said, just for me. But he said, not for me only, but for all of those that love his appearing. And we do. We know deep in hell. Love the appearing. Even by faith. And this is what we want. We want a faith that pleases God. Amen. And I believe that Deacon Allen had that faith. So let us be strong. Amen. And to know that there is that crown after the endurance. Thank you.
Colossians 3, verse 12. So put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, mild and merciful, kind, furnace of mind, meek, no, sir. That was my brother. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a cross against it. Yes, yes. Even as Christ forgave yes. you, yes. so also do ye. Yes. It's time to prove you love for Christ. Amen. Time to prove you love for Christ. Oh, yes. Verse 14. And above all things, yes, sir. put on church, which is the bond, bond of perfection. We can't do nothing because. If we ain't got his love, we keep it together. It is God's love that keeps everything together. And everybody that talks about God's love don't know what God's love is. Because God's love, and one scripture said, God's love don't keep account by how many times I forgive you and you forgive me. They, they, they people that say that ain't what the word said. The word said Peter said uh, uh, that when, but Peter said, "Am I to forgive my brother seven times in a day?" That won't be right answer. That won't be right answer. Jesus said, "No, seventy times seven in a day." But there's some people. But there's some people so small. The day keep up with that. Okay. Uh, they forgive somebody. Oh, Don't come telling me you got God no, 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 no. Verse 17. And whatsoever ye do yes. and word I do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Yes. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. If you ain't got God's love in it, you lost. You just wait. You just made a waste of truth. If you ain't got God's love in Because Jesus said, I'm the way the truth and the life. No man, no man coming to the Father but by me. He didn't tell you that you could write your own way. We have to, we have to go God's way. If we plan to see that beautiful place oh, that Bill told me about, uh -huh. we got to do it God's way. <laughs> That's the only way we're going to ever get there. Yes. To the family and to Hannah. Amen. I'm closing with Deuteronomy 31 and 8. Okay. These are the words of Moses. You know, we took, whenever Joshua was taking his place, taking his place, to go into the land, to lead the children into the land of Canaan. Over there where the land was flowing with milk and honey. This is what Moses told Joshua. And the word is true to us today. If we want to make it into one of those men where God has gone away to prepare, where Jesus has gone away to prepare, to prepare, to prepare, I can get it right, to prepare for us. And the Lord, He it is that doeth go. Before thee. Yes. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Yes. All right. All right. So don't fear. No, be dismayed. Thank you. May the works I've done. Speak for me. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have a selection by Jania Highsmith, followed by the eulogy from Apostle Hawkins Mark. Thank you. A son be. A son be. Jesus wants me for a son.
Amen. not sneaking in his pulpit <laughs> while he's awake. <laughs> Amen. And to all of the ministers of the Gospels, all of the preachers that are here, sitting on the roster to the presider, elder this fantastic job. That young man been preaching a long time. <laughs> He's a little bit before preaching right over there. <laughs> preaching hard. Preaching harder than me. I tried to <laughs> We thank God for him presiding for all of the other elders and bishops and everyone that's here. We thank God for it. All of this just shows the life that Deacon Peterson lived. And thank God for what he does. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get into the word deep now. Elder Beard has already read the scripture that I was going to out of Thessalonians, so I'll deal with that in just a few minutes. And I think we've already heard several words, so I didn't come to bring you anything that you haven't already heard. But I told you the family when I met with them the other day and said, that man was the reason why I'm here in this area. I wouldn't be in Sampson County area if it wasn't for him. It was him bringing his family to the assembly where I saw him, and they were together, and, and they weren't just there occupying space, but you can tell they had a bond. You can tell he loved this family. And he wasn't there just to show off. He was there to participate and be a part of the move of God. And we thank God for that. Myra is okay. It's all right. Thank you, Jesus. All of our hearts are heavy that knew her. My, I love her. We spent a lot of time together discussing business for this church. He and the, I and the other gentlemen that were on the board. And Amen. I don't want you to think that that was easy. Amen. Working with people is not easy. Amen. Trying to please people is not easy. Amen. And it's even harder trying to serve them. Yeah. Church is one of those places that's ran off a voluntary basis. People volunteer so you can't just treat them any kind of way. Yeah. Deacon Allen Peterson had mastered that art. Amen. He knew how to talk to everybody. He yeah. loved yeah. unconditionally. Yeah. He was firm, but he was fair. So let me do this, let me do this, let me go. Mark, it'll be all right. Iris, it's going to be all right. Mother Peterson, it's going to be all right. <laughs> and to all of you all, it's so good to see you. I'm just glad to be, I'm so honored to be a part of this celebration. This gentleman. It's a legend. Amen. Touched people everywhere. Amen. I had people ask me all over when I was here and really going to where is that singing deacon at? <laughs> I told him, I said, the reason why I got a lot of appointments was because of him. <laughs> he will not hear me. Either the harder he's saying, the harder I tried to preach. <laughs> the harder I tried to preach, the harder he said. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and I can't sing, so I didn't even try that. Anyway, let's get into this. Thank you for.
for being here. Thank you for your patience. First Thessalonians 4, First Thessalonians 4, uh, 13 through 18. It's already been read, so I'm going to read it very quickly. I'm going to say what i got to say, and we're going to get out your way, all right? <sighs> what a beautiful service. Amen. There's no doubt in my mind my brother is pleased. Paul, writing to the church at Thessalonica, said this, and I'm reading out of the New American Standard uh, Bible, and it would be a little bit different, but it still says basically the same thing. It says, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, All right. even so will God bring him with him and those who fall asleep in Jesus. He says, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord yeah. shall not perceive those right who have yeah. fallen yeah. asleep. Yeah. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, yeah. with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. All right. <laughs> Think My about Lord. that. My Lord. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort me one another with these words. I want to talk very briefly from a sermon topic, a meeting in the clouds. A meeting in the clouds. <laughs> Let me get that out of the way so I don't get confused. <laughs> oh my, I feel it in this place. When Paul was talking to the church at Thessalonica, some of them had lost some loved ones. And Paul wanted to make sure that they didn't act like those who did not know the Lord. All right. So Paul says in King James, I will not have you in. I do not want you to be out of the know. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I used to love about Deacon Peter is he would always say, I'm not cultured enough. <laughs> I worked with him long enough to know that that was a real misnomer. <laughs> he would say that just to say it to make it seem as if he didn't understand. But that man understood stuff that some of us would never dream of knowing about. So let's get back to Paul and the church at Thessalonica so I can get up your way. Paul says, he says, I wouldn't have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, those who have passed away. He says, I want you to know that they will have a special place with God. Now, 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 this is Paul telling them, he says, listen, it's okay to mourn because mourning is natural. Yeah. That's why I told you, Mara, it's okay. It's okay to shed a few tears. We are not superhuman. Right. And, and sometimes we think we got to always be strong. But the truth of the matter is when we are hurting, it's okay to express that hurt. And when you lose someone that you love like your father, and when you lose someone like your love, like your grandfather and great-grandfather and your uncle and your brother, hey, it's hard to hold back the tears. Amen. And for those of us like myself who met him and knew him not only as a co-laborer in the vineyard, but as a friend. Yeah. And, and, and to see the strength and the way he wore that badge of courage called the bloodstained banner oh, and man. always represented the king well, when you think about how he taught us and how he led us, you can't help from being emotional. But Paul says it's okay to mourn. He says that's natural. But then he says something about our joy. He says our hope is supernatural. He says the reason why is because we cannot act as if we have no hope. We can act like those who do not know the Lord. We can act like those who do not understand what happens to those who have served God, who has honored God, and who has worshipped Him. He says we cannot act as if there is not something out 
after this death. What, what, what Paul says here is, is, is listen, listen, I, I want you to understand, yeah, you can mourn. And, and yeah, yeah, it's okay to cry, but please do. He, he said, but when you rejoice, remember that something
to get saved. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry for how I lived. I'm sorry for how I act. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry. The only thing you have to do is say, Lord, save. I thought all it takes is somebody admitting that they need the Lord to help them. Nobody asks you to become a super saint. All you got to do is admit that you can't make it by yourself. And just give God the opportunity to come into your life. The Bible says the dead in Christ got up. And it says when they got up, they went with the Lord. And the Bible says the Lord made a call. And he says all of those that were still alive that they were changed in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. I told you that it was going to be a meeting in the clouds. This is what happened with that thing. Can I talk to you for a moment? Well, the Bible says that those that had died <laughs> got up with the Lord. That means when Jesus saw it was time to come back, <laughs> they said, Lord, it's time for us to escort you in to show you that the resurrection is alive. Oh, I can remember in Acts when Mary and the other sisters were standing there gazing into the air. And the angel comes and says, Why stand ye gazing up? This same Jesus. I beg you to say, This same Jesus. This same Jesus that you see going up. He's coming back again. And the good thing about it is this when you come back, everybody that died with him. Everybody that died praising him. Everybody that died honoring him will be right there with him. I don't know about you, but I want to be one in the member. Is there anybody in the house that wants to be one in the member? Well, it's time for me to go to my But there will be a meeting, and the meeting will be in the house. See, gravity will no longer any jurisdiction over us and no longer will sickness have any control over us and no longer will we have to answer up to those that don't care about us. I'm so glad that God has made a way that there will be a meeting in the clouds well, who will be at that meeting. I'm so glad you asked the Bible said, everybody that calls Jesus Lord shall be called to fear. I'm so glad that the Bible said, it does not matter how much money you got. It does not matter what kind of education you got. It does not matter what church you belong to. But what is that you know the Lord. Now as I close, I've got to tell you, not everybody will be able to go, but only those, I said only those, who've gone the name of the Lord. Anybody in the house ever called on him? I know Deacon Peterson did. Every time he sang, he called on him. When he got up in the morning, he called on him. Before he lay down at night, he called on him. How do I know? Because the Bible said that we should love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and all of our might. Well, I've been preaching too long now. It's time to me to sit down. But as I go to my seat, oh, Deacon Adam, I want you to know that you too can be saved. Call on the name, the name that's above every other name. Call on the name that took the sting out of death. Call on the name that took the victory out of the grave. Call on the name, the name that's above every name. Can anybody tell me what is that name? 
Christ. And the Bible said he's going to get up and escort our Savior. And our Savior is going to decree that it's time now to meet him in the air. And we'll meet him there and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Anybody glad about it?
Dinner has been prepared here in the church fellowship hall for the family and the friends. Thank you. 